Now, it is a pretty important place where I stopped and I was trying to talk about I stopped at a place called one of the functions of a central bank this is a traditional function and you will find in other countries that central banks doing the same thing they use these instruments. It is called central banks function is the role of the central bank is credit control controller of credit this is function number 4 function number 4 controller of credit. Now, as a controller of credit this becomes directly connected with monetary policy because credit is part of money supply creates money supply. So, controller of credit is essentially controlling money supply. So, it is monetary policy I am talking about just just not reserve bank functions it is that important thing called monetary policy. And what are the instruments traditional instruments they control credit there is one the first one is called bank rate. Now, what is bank rate? Bank rate is simply the interest rate of the central bank. So, when central bank lends money say to commercial banks what is the interest rate it charges the bank rate. This bank rate is often also used as the discount rate when banks borrow money from central bank against securities. So, banks invest in securities you will get the banking topic next topic banks invest in securities various kinds it invest in primarily risk less securities banks are not allowed to invest in the share market the share market investment is risk investment it is called speculative investment. So, when banks invest they invest in bonds government bonds semi government or like state electricity board railway bonds infrastructure bonds private sector debentures they may try I am not so sure. Then they also invest in commercial papers CDs of other banks. Now, so when banks sometimes need cash and the repo market is a classic case where cash is used securities are used, but here it is some other kind of borrowing then banks obtaining cash from the central bank against securities the discount rate will be used says the security value it deposited with the central bank is 100 crores. Now, what is the interest rate that RBI would charge which is called discount rate the discount rate will be the bank rate all right. The bank rate has also therefore, what you can see how it is connected in our country let me put it right in the beginning in our country bank rate is seldom used not used at all as a monetary policy instrument, but you go to any western country the bank rate is one of the most important monetary policy instrument or credit control instrument in India it is not traditionally in India it is not it is there you can get information on bank rate, but it is not used as a monetary policy instrument I do not know why reason may be we had a public sector banking system here in public sector you can directly control the interest rate of the public sector banks that would also influence the interest rates of the private sector banks because they have to compete with them all right. So, what you do you directly control. So, there is no indirect measure required to control the interest rate of banks. Now, how is bank rate therefore, connected indirectly with the interest rate of the banks It's connected in the following way. If the bank rate goes up commercial banks borrow money from RBI at a higher rate immediately commercial banks themselves would lend money at a higher rate it is a profit maximizing organization. So, if costs go up those who can control the price at which they sell goods would also raise the prices that is why cost push inflation was one of the earliest theories of inflation. So, if costs go up prices would go up it is natural because you are a profit making entity if your costs go up in order to cover for the cost you would raise the price at which you would sell the goods. So, banks are making profit by lending money which is creation of credit it is called. Now, lending you are charging an interest rate which is kind of an income on that lending. So, if now I have to borrow money from RBI which I require from time to time at a higher rate I would also naturally charge the lending rate higher all right. It is not necessarily connected with the deposit rate the deposit rate would also get connected with the bank rate if 
I am really short of cash all the time, so I have to raise the deposit rate also to bring in more money. There are two main rates broadly speaking lending rate and deposit rate. The lending rate is directly connected, so the cost of credit it is called the cost of credit, the cost of credit will go up. So, bank rate therefore becomes an important credit control instrument and if cost of credit goes up what will happen? Companies would be shy to borrow money from banks, so credit creation goes down. So, for a restrictive monetary policy a simple mechanism that central banks in western world use is to raise the bank rate. When you have a relaxed monetary policy which is an expansionary monetary policy not a contractionary monetary policy then you lower the bank rate lowering bank rate automatically lowers the lending rate. Okay. All right. So, this is the main monetary policy transmission mechanism or the route through which bank rate gets connected with, but if you have a country like India which for years interest rates of banks were directly controlled by the central bank why would you require the bank rate probably this is the reason why bank rate has never been used. Even now except after years 5, 6, 7, 8 years where the bank rate was static at 6 percent. I found some data recently when I was prepared revising my notes for the data files for you this semester. For a couple of months I think not even a year the bank rate was increased in India to 8 percent or something and it has gone back to 6 percent again. What, do, what does it mean? That means, India must be pursuing have been pursuing a restrictive monetary policy the bank rate was used. Now, where else is the bank rate used? Bank rate is very important. Now, I come to some other points which are very important in the context of India. It not only that it used as a rediscount or the discount rate or the interest rate of the central bank when it lends to commercial banks. There is an important connection of bank rate with the non banking activities of the central bank. Our central bank also has some direct connection with many non banks which is very unusual maybe in, com in comparison to other countries. Let me give an example, there are many non banks in India like IDBI, Exim Bank, State Financial Corporations etcetera, who were directly funded and created by the RBI. Now, if you look at the data they are such successful and independent organizations they do not depend upon the central bank which is RBI for any funds. Okay. Okay. So, now when they were directly funded and they are not banks that they can collect public money they have to have a source of money to do the work they do. Exim bank does the work in supporting export import business, IDBI does the work in supporting industrial development which is not small industry, heavy industry and medium industry. Small industry ka main organization kya hai India mein ek, hum se hum one, CIDB. Who created CIDB? This is very interesting, IDBI. So, RBI created IDBI, IDBI created CIDB, this is how it is going. Now, where do they get the money? The business they do, for instance, you interact with CIDB here, you create some concept, business concept some technology you need some seed capital for a prototype for instance, the engineering students would understand that. So, in order to create the prototype you need money, now IT Kanpur does not give you IT Kanpur <coughs> asks you to go to SIDB and SIDB provides the money, where does SIDB get the money? SIDB will get the money from somebody, it gets the money from IDBI and IDBI used to get the money from RBI. So, there was a line or a credit line which is not a credit a refinance line which existed for, for many years from RBI to these organizations non banks all right. They gave the money, the money was returned to RBI again RBI renewed the cash refinancing all right. Now, what kind of an interest rate did they ask RBI here also RBI was using if not exactly the bank rate, but some rate in relation to using a mathematical formula maybe in relation to the bank rate. So, the bank rate was the key variable which was determining the interest rate or refinancing rate whatever. 
Now bank rate is also used as I already mentioned in case of ways and means advances interest rate that RBI charges when it gives temporary advances for two months one month to the state governments central government bank rate is used. It is also used when it gives advances to a system I haven't talked about I will talk about that in the last topic maybe in the month of November is the some cooperative banks which are very interesting institutions in India nobody people you and me would not will not know about cooperative banks unless we grew up in a semi urban area rural area we would know about cooperative banks but cooperative banks exist in India. We know these public sector banks usually and also now the, uh, the foreign banks the private banks we know ok. So the refinancing and also is very interesting commercial banks in India are compulsorily required to keep CRR cash you know that now by now all right. And um, the question is when the CRR cash is kept with RBI does RBI give you any interest to the banks because banks are parted with the funds they could have created loans or credits yes bank rate is used and therefore when they fail to meet the CRR requirement again bank rate is used as a penal rate in which case the banks will have to pay an interest to the RBI the penal rate the penalty. Suppose I as a bank was supposed to show, show this amount of CRR cash keep them with the central bank last week I could not I mismanaged my funds I collected deposits but could not show that amount of CRR. So there will be a penalty and what is the interest on that penalty penalty means not only I have to put that money in future but also the period that I will make RBI wait for it I will have to give RBI an interest rate again bank rate is used. So when RBI gets the CRR cash RBI pays the bank rate as an interest rate to the banks who are parting with from their cash I mean who are, who are, who are parting uh, from the from the holding of that cash that they keep with the central bank the RBI and interest is paid to the banks if banks fail to meet the CRR requirement they will have to penalty rate again bank rate is used. So bank rate is used in many places all right. Now I have already told you how the bank rate has uh, has been used to as a discount rate etc. but not at all as a monetary policy instrument hardly monetary policy instrument you will know if you open TVs these TVs tell you clearly CRR is one repo rates some indirect instructions about interest rates etc they are using as monetary policy instrument. The bank rate you would believe me the bank rate um, was about 3 percent in 1950 I will show you the data went up to 10 percent in 82 until 1990s it remained at 10 percent so the bank rate steadily went up then somewhere in the 1990s bank rate was raised to 12 percent with very interesting in the 1990s on the one hand in the 1990s you have the reforms coming in on the other hand the bank rate went up to 12 percent very interesting I and mean, they are contradictory I do not know why it is so. Now it has come back since 1997 it has become 6 percent but recently it went up to 8 percent and came down again. All right bank rate gone now I come to CRR ok. Next point is CRR CRR I have talked about that. is as I told you if I as a bank collect deposits I am supposed to keep a part of that deposit with in cash form physically hand that over to RBI not show it not tell them I have kept it aside I have to actually physically carry it to RBI all right. Now the CRR is not on the total deposits if CRR is calculated on something called NDTL 
net demand and time liabilities of banks. Why is there liability? Because banks collect deposits, so it is the li banks are liable to return that money to the depositors. So it is banks' liability. Demand and time liabilities, that means the total amount they collect under demand deposit accounts, savings account, current account, whatever, and fixed deposit accounts, time accounts, which are fixed deposits of various durations, recurring deposits, etc., whatever we have. What is net N NDTL? Net demand and time liabilities, NDTL is net demand and time liabilities. What is net? Net of interbank deposits. So, one bank has some deposit in a demand deposit account of another bank, or one bank has some deposit in a time deposit account of another bank, those bank accounts are deducted. So, it is essentially the public money that you hold. Simple. CRR, not the total deposits and banks balance sheet I will show you next topic coming. So, it will complete the course, your understanding will become more complete when I have the next topic, they are all connected. So, I will show you what are the liabilities that banks usually have and the assets etcetera. Now, so this is how CRR works. But remember CRR in India is only on scheduled commercial banks and some cooperative banks. What are scheduled cooperative banks? Scheduled commercial banks? Scheduled commercial banks are essentially RBI constitution may likha a chapter may second chapter or something that a bank has to comply with this kind of restrictions, regulations or disciplines then they will be declared scheduled commercial banks. And in India most banks today are organized sector banks are scheduled commercial banks maybe one or two are left out all have become scheduled banks they are pretty disciplined. And if you are a scheduled commercial bank then you get certain advantages privileges from the RBI like in case of a distress RBI would help you, but RBI will also make you keep CRR cash. So, this CRR is applicable not to the entire monetary sector of the Indian economy it is applicable only to the scheduled commercial banks which come under the organized sector. Even in the organized sector there are some unscheduled commercial banks or non-scheduled commercial banks and the unorganized sector of course, has many banks etcetera money, money making business units who, do, who are not covered. Now, what happens to the non-scheduled commercial banks? The interesting thing that happens with the non-scheduled commercial banks is that they would tell you you have to keep CRR, but you do not have to keep the cash. The restriction still applies, but in case of non scheduled commercial banks, you are not supposed to keep the cash with the central bank. So, if there is a periodic inspection by RBI officials, they can check whether CRR is maintained or not in some corner of a commercial bank, some vault may, I can check. So, they are given instruction like we, I give you an instruction that. Um, for the money and banking course you should at least put in an hour every day in the evening, but I do not go and check or you do not come and see me every day sir ek ghanta hai dekho aapke saamne baite ho par rao money and banking course. In case of CRR you will have to come and sit in front of me and show that this is the cash you have and you can give it to me I will keep it. In case of non scheduled commercial banks you have to just tell me you have done it. This is the difference that it comes. So, CRR is not applicable to the entire monetary sector either. So, the larger the unorganized sector, larger the number of non scheduled commercial banks in a country, they have a problem. And you know something what has happened? I think this is also happening. I have to collect more information. Many non banks these days have a lot of cash, and central bank is worried about it, how they are using it. And they may be asking non banks also to show CRR. Non banks also are being asked to show CRR. I am not exactly, uh, uh, I am not exactly knowledgeable about the which are the non banks and where in what circumstances CRR is asked from them, the requirement. The cooperative banks are also there. Now, you know something. If you look at the history of CRR in India, 
you will see that uh, well from 1999 it has become a weekly CRR weekly basis, but they gave you a fortnight time to show two weeks back last Friday <coughs> deposit ka CRR. So, this Friday I am supposed to show two weeks back Friday kitna cash tha uska CRR. This Friday I am not I do not have to show the deposits of this week CRR where it is there. So, what happens once you start keeping CRR if your deposits go up you have to just add some cash because it is already there with RBI and if the CRR is going down then there is a reverse flow of funds from RBI to the banks. So, already you have x amount, but the amount has become x plus y because of larger deposits this week I will have to show that extra CRR on y this is how it goes and a fortnight's time is given to report that. And um, cooperative banks, regional rural banks, etcetera, they are also asked to maintain CRR, but then they are not asked to show that. Anyway, I will talk about that. And uh, at times, it is very interesting, they had a CRR once upon a time separately from demand liabilities and time liabilities, not general CRR, which we have today. Today, we have a general CRR of 7 percent on NDTL. Once upon a time in India, there was a CRR on D and a CRR on T separately. And my notes are saying those CRR dates, I have some one uh, data here, the D CRR was higher and the T CRR was less, lower. You can understand time deposits usually money which is kept with a bank and not to be withdrawn on a regular basis, fixed deposit accounts. So, RBI was not that worried about that CRR because banks can have more freedom to use that money deposits which are coming under fixed deposit accounts or through fixed deposit accounts. But in case of demand liabilities is dangerous money comes in money can go out any time. So, the CRR was also higher there. So, RBI essentially telling the commercial banks look look demand deposit account may throw a higher CRR dar kuri utna freedom we do not want to give you to use that money for credit creation purposes. So, that is why the data was like that in my notes and a 3 percentage point difference some once upon a time it was like that in the 60s maybe the 50s and 60s demand uh, liability CRR was 5 percent time liability CRR was 2 percent. Then around 1962 they merged, so it was in the 50s. Since then it went up and the maximum CRR is 15 percent. I think there was an upper limit on bank rate also, it was 12 percent I think. Do I have the note? I do not have it here. There is an upper limit on bank rate also according to the RBI constitution bank rate can go from 0 it can be 0 as in foreign countries sometimes it has gone to nearly 0 near 0 it is very low in those countries these days to a very high of probably 12 percent I have forgotten question mark laga udar CRR again it can come to very close to 0 which is in western countries that is why the banking industry got into trouble there was no cash with the central bank to bail them out. So, whom are they asking government and what is happening to government budget deficits are increasing. Not only the economy is down for which they are overspending, they now have to bail out the banks they do not have cash. So, much trouble imagine this Sierra was invented by them they do not maintain that unbelievable when I heard that so I came across in a book about bank of Canada I could not believe that in a monetary economics book. I can give you the reference also to that book of that book it is in the library. So, what is happening is that I think it is the maximum permissible limit <laughs> is 15 percent according to the constitution of RBI the RBI act 
either RBA Act or some other document. So, CRR can increase up to 15 percent. Question is, has it ever reached 15 percent with that tight a monetary policy RBI decided to pursue? It was there during Rajiv Gandhi years at the end of the seventh plan. From Dr. Manmohan Singh's era, it started coming down Sierra. It did reach 15 percent. I will try to show you the data, which is unthinkable, very high Sierra. Now, it is half of that roughly. It varies between 7 and 8, 7 and 8, taking a 7, 7.25, 7.5, 8, maximum 8.25 comes down again. It, it fluctuates between a very small range now. It is a much more con, much more liberalized confident economy today. Those days were not days of confidence in the Indian economy. Achha. And at one point, I do not know why, in the 80s or 70s, they had incremental CRR, which means CRR you decay on total deposits. Now, in this week, there is an extra deposit that has come. All right. So, now I am going to calculate x plus y, which is z, a CRR for the entire NDTL, plus extra jo y i hai, uske upar an extra CRR, do teen percent. So, central bank was really trying to suffocate the commercial banks when it comes to credit creation, because the deposits they mobilize not only they have had a very high CRR, which is on the total this week, but also the extra delta deposit that has taken place between last week and this week, an extra CRR called incremental CRR this also they had and I found that out from RBI documents footnote may very interesting do not waste footnotes. When you become an economic student and read a paper this is my advice to you or any document main frame main document page to they cry up per ray and sometimes people usually ignore the footnotes do not increase many many cases I have found very important information is hiding in very small 8 point 8 font size the rest of the document is 12 may be 8 font size may yeah 7 font size may footnote may ye mai humko mila footnote se rbi document ka incremental crr this amazing feature they had all right and also now with the opening of the economy liberalized economy with nri accounts separate i told you often nri accounts they have separate and they have some accounts which are in rupee accounts, some NRI accounts are in foreign currency accounts. So, the money comes in foreign currency, remains in foreign currency, interest is paid on that and then it when it withdraws, they withdraw in foreign currency. To facilitate NRI movement, money movement in India all right, because if you have to come here money and then you have to keep it in Indian currency, it has to be get converted. And at the time of withdrawal, also it has to get converted back into the currency from where it has come, either US or who knows, England or something. So, what is interesting is I do not have the information here. There is a probably a different value of CRR on a non resident Indian accounts, they have kept that separate. In state bank, I found out. If you look at the back, sometimes there is a board which carries information on various interest rates on various accounts, various fixed deposit accounts, two year into two year fixed deposits meet the interest rate, three year meet na, one year it na NRI accounts also you will see they have different interest rates. Similarly, CRR on NRI deposits in India probably under the advice of the central bank is different. Now, as I told you and um, all right and as I told you that the CRR cash that is kept with RBI is usually the bank rate is paid sometimes in order to same thing in order to have a contractionary policy more effective reserve bank 
told the commercial banks we will give you an interest rate above the bank rate on CRR to make them pay or keep a large amount of CRR cash with them. Sometimes they have done that also. So, this is CRR. The CRR, uh, uh -huh, I have it. Uh, it is amazing. No, no, not Rajiv Gandhi era. Rajiv Gandhi era, I mean, it was 15 percent, but then during Dr. Manmohan Singh era, 1994, it is amazing. We went up from 14.5 percent to 14 percent, again 14.5 to 15 percent. Unbelievable. And then around the late 1990s, it started dropping, dropping, dropping. 2002, it dropped to 4.75 CRR. 2003, 4.5. 2004, 5. 2007, 5. 2007, 7.5. 2008, 9. Varga CRR. This is very odd to me. Recession is setting in. CRR going up, Indian monetary policy I really do not understand, RBI's monetary policy to be honest with you. If the recession is coming, if you look at the western countries bank rates, they do not have CRR much, it is nearly 0, they have been falling usually. When recession is there, it will fall. In India, it goes up the reverse. In 2003, 4.5, 2004, 5. 2007, 7.5, 2008, 9. High problem. Mira problem, yes. During the recession, the banks people try to keep the money currency from the market. That means they keep it with themselves. That's Very good point. Very true. Cash holding is gone. Cash holding increases. Yeah. So, in the government tries to increase the CRR by holding money, not holding money, keeping the market currency from the market. So, that is the reason why they are holding the money and holding the money. I have not understood your point. Yeah. Government is not cannot prevent by even CRR, CRR is on the bank deposits. No, in recession banks are flush with funds. No, 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 bank failing was not never a case in India. CRR I think it is ridiculous. I think one reason I can find why they have been raising CRR in the recession years is that around the, the time of the recession years a bit later inflation set in as a problem. So, they were trying to control inflation through tight money policy and this is where they have damaged the Indian economy also. Because by raising CRR you are raising the lending rate because when banks give loans they would raise the lending rate. Like lending rate means cost of finance goes up for companies and company investments would shrink. Simple, I am simplifying the whole picture. So, it is not a good thing in recession years your CRR going up, not at all. That means, you are giving the indication to banks that you do not have to really go and lend. You can keep the money with us, we will give you a handsome interest. So, banks would become more lethargic, they would not be uh, what you call that proactive in finding out where to give loan innovate in their lending system, in the kinds of loans they give in order to survive and make some money still. Already recession is there, it is not a good thing at all. And people cash holding, um, recession in recession times people cash holding do not go up. People cash holding goes up in times of inflation, because in inflation, they know by tomorrow prices will go up farther, they will try to spend on essential things right away. So, their cash holding increases. Recession, there is not much spending going on. I might Madhi rather be somewhere, parked somewhere, where I get a return. And people cash holding is not directly related to CRI. CRI is directly related to the bank's credit creation abilities, cost of finance. Etcetera. All right. Okay. So it's it, it's it's amazing. I mean, I have to look at the data. It, it just doesn't make much sense to me. In India, everything is ulta pulta. I mean, this a normal logic, common sense doesn't prevail. So it's very difficult for me to appreciate this. You can find out reasons for that. 
tight money policy they had if they had high CRR tight money policy one reason could be to control inflation. In fact, this has been a very painful way of controlling inflation in India because there are all sorts of other reasons why inflation is there. We have food surplus, we have food inflation. I mean there are all sorts of other things. It is not monetary policy which is going to solve that problem. Ridiculous monetary policy trying to solve that problem. You have food surplus, you have food inflation. So, is it the RBI's headache and RBI can solve it? A person has food on the table does but suffers from malnutrition all right. What is the doctor going to do? Food on the table suffers from malnutrition what is the doctor going to do? You tell me ridiculous Indian policies monetary policies are unbelievable I, I really do not understand this. So, maybe you will understand one day your economy. As so next is I am coming to open market operation this is the final one which is often there in theoretical models. The talk of monetary policy I have seen they not only they have a bank rate as a variable or something interest rate, but they also have an open market policy directly modeled in their framework made it a part of the model. So, open market operations are the last one controller of credit open market operations. open market operations there are two types of open market operations open market sale and open market purchase open market sale of securities and open market purchase essentially directly controls the money supply. When bank rate has been raised CRR has been raised, but company or banks are still flush with funds and they can give out loans, but government wants a tight money policy they can go for open market operations whereby they can sell securities directly to the banks and state governments and whoever is keeping money in banks etcetera have surplus funds can buy government securities which are usually very attractive because they are risk less assets that you can buy no risk involved sure payment no chance of default good interest income and therefore, it can squeeze out cash from the system this is open market sale the other one when banks are not having much cash there is a shortage of liquidity in the system companies are asking for more money deposits are not much high they can go for open market purchase of securities by purchasing RBI will hand over cash in return and it can inject funds into the system money supply into the system. So, this is a direct method to control money supply the bank rate CRR are indirect ones in some sense and this is direct CRR is more direct than bank rate bank rate is the most indirect one to influence money supply. CRR is slightly better it has some direct relationship with bank cash availability and open market operations is the other most direct money supply control <coughs> instruments. These are standard traditional monetary policy instruments across countries used by central banks, but we will not stop there because Indian central bank is very different. Before I come to the non traditional functions today I will just mention shortly one thing I will begin maybe and not able to complete it is a very important function of the central bank of any country is to look after the exchange rate this is open economy macroeconomics look after the exchange rate all right. So, now what I would do is I would just mention number 5 the function is called exchange control authority controller of credit and exchange control authority. Now, things have changed over the years with respect to RBI's intervention in the exchange market. RBI initially India used to initially have a fixed exchange rate system have you done that in macroeconomics macroeconomic theory fixed exchange rate system flexible exchange rate system 
good next semester you have my course I will take it up in the context of monetary policy, but you can extend it to fiscal policy also. What happens in India or a country there are two kinds of broad polar positions of exchange systems one is called a fixed exchange system one is a flexible exchange system. Now in a fixed exchange system what happens whenever exchange fluctuates from the fixed value central bank of a country intervenes suppose the exchange value is going up so central bank would intervene by supply more like exchange it is like a price price of US dollar in terms of Indian currency. So, 52 rupees per dollar it is like a price you are buying dollar as a good using 52 Indian currency Indian rupee. Suppose it is going up to 53 when a price goes up what happens in a demand supply framework when there is price going up means there is a demand pressure when demand curves shift prices go up when supply curves shift prices come down I am talking about rightward shift or outward shift if demand outward shifts prices go up if supply outward shifts prices down. So, if there is a demand pressure on rupee price of dollar that means there is a demand pressure all you can ease that is by pumping in more foreign currency in that market foreign exchange market. So, that the supply increases and it will come down on the other hand if the supply shift is too much and Indian exchange rate vis a vis dollar currency value of dollar Indian currency value of dollar is now appreciating which is it is becoming 51, 50, 49, 48 rupees ok. So, the US dollar in terms of Indian price Indian currency is going down that means too much of supply is there and you do not want that to happen there are reasons why a country may not like that apparently it looks like very attractive are they go US dollar it is expensive 53 dollars 53 rupees per dollar now it has gone down to 49 rupees per dollar 48 rupees per dollar all right. So, when it does happen then what do you do? you can intervene by increasing the demand for dollar. So, RBI can go as an artificial buyer and start buying dollar. So, the price will start going up again price going up means depreciation of the currency the meaning of that is depreciation of its value in terms of US dollar because one US dollar now costs more. So, Indian currency costs is cheaper Shasta ho gaya. So, this fixed versus flexible exchange systems do give rise to the need of the central bank to intervene. In case of a fixed exchange system central bank will have to intervene to keep the price there because there is a continuous up and down of the exchange rate and it has to moderate. In case of a flexible system the central bank tasks are much easier it would broadly monitor keep an eye open if it is going up or going down how much is going up how much is going down and if only if it is too much they would intervene 